Mother's Day, the one day a year we set aside to celebrating our sweet moms for all the ways they're so nice to us. Bringing our breakfast in bed, going to church together, buying her flowers and other girly stuff, giving her a little quiet time, making her a nice picture or a card, taking her to dinner, and maybe, just maybe, letting her play Jedi Night Fighters from the planet Typhon with us. Or, you know, whatever she wants. Anything is fine, really. It's your day, Mom. What should we do together? You know what time it is. Let's see. What is your first job? My first job was actually working at Sonic Drive Through or Drive In, whatever you want to call it. I was there for about three years. Did that in high school and a little bit into college. Taught me a lot. Taught me how to work on my feet. And I really appreciate it. I definitely recommend it to anybody else. Also, if you didn't know this, tip your car hop because they actually work off of tips. Well, good morning, good morning, Solid Rock family and friends. We are super excited that you are joining us today because today's a special day. Today is Mother's Day. Man, it is an awesome day to celebrate the moms here. It is awesome to know that, hey, if you have a chance, get a chance to call your mom, sit next to your mom. Hopefully she's in the room with you right now, but enjoy today with your mother because she made you she made you to be the person that you are today so let's just celebrate our moms well in celebrating our moms I have a couple announcement for you and one super fun one that we're gonna start off with the first video announcement that I have for you guys is to let y'all know of our upcoming baby bottle drive if you're a member of solid rock church you've probably heard of this before but this was from a different organization uh, where they used to call themselves CTLC but they've recently changed their names to True Choice. And True Choice is an organization that helps mothers and, and people in need that are going through pregnancy, that are going through what it's like, and being sure that they can be able to support them and help them as that baby come along. Man, we got these awesome, cute little baby bottles, and this is what we're doing, is we are taking these baby bottles home, we are filling them up with coins and dollars, and then donating them off to go towards many of the mission fields that they work with. Any of your donations are going to be going towards things like helping people with pregnancy testing, adoption referrals, abstinence education, Bible studies, uh, confidential counseling. It's also going to help you with community referrals and ultrasound services. And I'm reading this off of our big baby bottle that we have here at the church. So if you want to donate to True Choice and help us as we go from Mother's Day all the way to Father's Day, celebrating the moms and helping them with the, the, the difficulties that can come from pregnancy. We would love for your help in this. We here at Solid Rock Church are going to have this big bottle and a couple small ones for people to be able to check out and to take home and fill up here at the church. But for our online audience here, we wanted to let you guys know that there's still a way for y'all to donate. We want you to be able to go online and we're going to have a link right here, which is going to be just the true choice donation link once you go to that link you can go ahead and put in your amount and if there's a note just say this is from solid rock church and that'll go towards our mission field and what we're trying to donate if you're a little skeptical about doing things online we totally understand and you have two options you can either mail a check here to solid rock church and we'll take care of it for you we'll go ahead and make sure that if you do write a check you're saying it out to true choice not solid rock church this money is not going to solid rock church this money is going to true choice but if you just mail it to us we'll be able to take care of it write all the memos out and then send it off to them or if you just want to send a check directly to them i'm going to flash up their name and their p.o box that you can send it to and all you got to do is in the little memo on your check just write from solid rock church and man, all this is gonna be is an awesome mission field for us to be able to help women in need, families in need that are going through pregnancies because man, what what better day than today to celebrate the moms and to really help the ones out there that are on the front lines of pregnancy. 
Well, the last announcement that I have for you guys today is the usual rigmarole of getting connected. Man, we would love for you to get connected with your neighbors, your family, your friends, people around you. We don't want this to just be a one-way communication where I'm telling you information and Bill and Jason are too. Man, we want you guys to be able to communicate back to us. So get connected. Talk to us in the comments. Email us at the info at srcrocks.com. Don't forget, you can also find us on our social media platforms. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on YouTube. You can even find us on our website at srcrocks.com. We would love to get connected with you. We would love to know who you are. We would love to be able to preach the word of Jesus Christ into you and to remind you that you are loved, that you are cared for, and you are a beautiful creation. And we want to walk with you in your journey of coming closer to Christ. Well, since that's the last one, we're going to go ahead and kick it off into worship. And right after worship, we're going to be wrapping up in our last part of the Serving God series with Bill, and I'm literally looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun one, so let's just get right into it. So here we go.
There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide, where all the love I've ever found comes like a
Good morning. Welcome back to Solid Rock Church and another day of hearing God's message. I hope that you're doing well today. We are closing our sermon series today called Serving God. We have the previous three sermons. Today will be the fourth sermon, a four-sermon part in Serving God. And we've said in those past sermons that we need a firm foundation when serving the Lord. 
We've talked about that our simple or small actions are significant in the kingdom work of God. Last week, we saw that God asks us to do things opposite of what the world says to do. We learned if we wanted to get ahead in leadership that God says, get down in service first. Jesus says, first focus in on service and then on others. And as our sermon verse today says, we're also moved to action. We read today, I read today from John chapter 12, verse 26, as our sermon verse for today's sermon. If anybody wants to serve me, he must follow me, and where I am, my servant will be too. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Those are the words of Jesus. Notice that there's an an order to walking and being effective with Jesus. We must first give our lives to Jesus. Then we must be a servant or submitted to Jesus. And then we must act or walk with Jesus. If all we ever do is sit here and talk about serving others and never do it, then we have no influence with others for the cause of Christ. The fact is is that we are activated to go out and serve others once we've given our lives to Jesus, once we have learned to serve Jesus in humility then we got to go out. And that is our sermon title for today. Go out. Go out. Let me ask you, do you have any collectibles at home? Specifically, do you have any collectible toys? There's a, that's a huge industry. I just did a little research for this sermon and, and found out that toy collection is big business. And especially if you have an old antique toy that's still in the box with the original packaging. They call that toy in the original box with the original packaging. And particularly if it's unopened, they call it NIB, NIB. And that stands for new in box. And that brings the highest price for antique toys. Just to check that out, to give you an example, I found on a uh, a, a search engine called SD. I found a 1990s era Polly Pocket vintage fairy gift set. Now, can I just tell you, I don't know a lot about that, and a lot of the ladies out there will have an appreciation for that. And in the 1990s, when the Polly Pocket vintage fairy gift set first came out, I don't know how much it was, but probably in the 90s, 20 bucks, less than 20 bucks. When I looked at this in 2021, searched it, that if you found one of those new in box, and I did, they were asking $1,083.21. New in box prices. Any toy in its original packaging, never been played with, brings a much higher price, always brings a much higher price than the same exact toy of the same exact age that's been roughly played with dirty or missing a part or two. And that's great in the world of antique toys, but let me ask you a question. Which of the two toys toys is really the most valuable? The one that's NIB, or the one that's been played with, loved on, taken taken on vacations, slept with in bed, lost and found more than a dozen times? Which one has more value? It's an interesting question, isn't it? See, when it comes to serving God and influencing others, you can keep yourself in IB, new in the box, or you can put yourself in God's hands and go out and do the work of the ministry, which really means getting messy in people's lives. We'll see today in today's sermon that through the life and legacy of Stephen, one of the early disciples, that there's more value in life that fulfills its purposes, that is messy, that goes out and does ministry, than the nice, clean, properly dressed believers in church or the NIBs. See, Stephen got out of the box. Stephen went out and brought the word of Jesus to a lost world. 
He was used by Christ. He was engaged for Christ. And as a result, Stephen left a lasting legacy for us to see here today in this sermon. So today, for my note takers, I want to serve, uh, uh, observe three insights on Stephen as we talk in terms of going out, taking Jesus out into a dying world. Number one, number one is... Stephen getting out of the box is the story of Stephen. We see in Acts chapter 6 that the early, early church forms a new group of servant leaders called deacons. And they were specifically designed to serve the body of Christ around them. And we see that Stephen was one of those early first deacons. And we see this in Acts chapter 6 verse 5. The proposal, the proposal of the deacons pleased the entire group. So they chose Stephen, a man full of faith under the Holy Spirit, along with Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas, a Gentile converted to Judaism from Antioch. That's the early first deacons that were selected by the people to serve the people. See, part of Stephen's job in the context of the Scriptures in Acts 6 was to wait tables while the apostles were devoting themselves to the prayer and the ministry of the Word. But we see that Stephen allowed himself to be used further by God, certainly as a servant, but also as his influence grew, we see him being a servant for kingdom work of God, not only in the early church, but in his community. Consider Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Now Stephen, full of grace and power, was performing great wonders and miracle signs among the people. The Holy Spirit is moving through Stephen. There's some type of miracles that is going on, not for the purpose of glorifying Stephen, but for the purpose of glorifying God. That is so God. Great moves of God always, always, always start with people's willingness to humble themselves before the Lord and serve. But you must get started. You must be willing to get out of the box. You must say, here I am, Lord, send me to be able to go out into the ministry. It takes a willing heart to do that. Stephen found that he was gifted and he was used by God in other ways other than just being a deacon. Nothing wrong with just being a deacon if that's the role God has for you. But Stephen realized there was more he could do. He began impacting the crowds, meaning the unbelievers. He began preaching the gospel of Christ Jesus, which of course meant in his day, first century church, that he was met with resistance. We see this resistance revealed to us in the scriptures in Acts chapter 6, verses 13 and 14. That says that they, meaning the Jewish religious leaders, brought forward false witnesses who said, this man, meaning Stephen, does not stop saying things against the holy place and the law. For we have heard him saying that Jesus the Nazarene will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. That just drove the Jewish leadership Crazy to hear that the temple might be torn down and that Jesus was here to change the law, change the customs of Moses. Now, Jesus didn't really come to do that, but that was the false statements made about Jesus. Stephen understood what Peter would later write, and that was, "...humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand." that he, God, may lift you up in due time. Peter said that and understood that. Stephen understood what Peter meant in that. But the problem for so many of us today, 2021 American Christians, is that we would really rather sit new in the pew than be willing to get under God's mighty hand. See, God's hand takes you to places we wouldn't go on our own accord. God's hand takes us into ministries we're a little uncomfortable in doing. Left up to us, our flesh 
we would never do the things God is trying to take us to go do right now. See, when we're in God's hands, we become that toy, based on our earlier image, that gets used, and we get scuffed up, we get banged around, and in fact, we get hurt sometimes. That's why God says, my grace is sufficient for you in your weakness. Stephen was used by God, and he was eventually stoned to death, but what he did was having a lasting legacy. And in fact, that's our second point for today. Point two is, let's leave a lasting legacy. What is legacy, Pastor Bill? Well, I'm glad you asked. Legacy is the influence that outlives you. Some of us will have legacies with our children and grandchildren. The things that we teach, the, th the way that we love, the way we took care of our families will outlive our physical lives and will be remembered for one, two, three generations, perhaps. Stephen's legacy e equaled the expansion of the gospel, even though he was never, even though he never left Jerusalem and he was martyred early in the faith. Stephen's ministry led to persecution of the early church and then eventually dispersion of the early saints, which really means that the gospel message went out. Some of those early actions of Stephen riled up religious leadership to take the, the hard action of killing Stephen and threatening the early church, and many of the early church spread out. We see this revealed in the very beginning of chapter 8 of Acts. I'm going to read from Acts chapter 8, verses 1, and I'm going to skip to verse 4. Verse 1 says, And Saul, which would later become Paul, spoiler alert, then Saul agreed completely with killing him, meaning Stephen. Now on that day, a great persecution began against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were forced to scatter throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. There's the dispersion. Verse 4 says, Now those who had been forced to scatter went around proclaiming the good news of the word. The good news of Jesus. Sometimes the appearance of things in the moment doesn't reveal the value until later. That's the truth here in Stephen. In the moment, those early believers, the early church sees St Stephen killed, stoned to death, and there would be great fear. And then the persecution came and the, and the terror of having to flee Jerusalem. But look what happens. They would go scatter the good word. What does that look like perhaps maybe in more modern times? Consider World War II. It was a horrible, deadly conflict that involved much of the world and recorded the deaths of millions of soldiers and civilians. It also saw the attempted extermination of the Jewish people. And yet from that horrible time in history, after the conclusion of the war, doors opened, people were moved to action, obstacles fell, all leading to the establishment of the nation of Israel in 1948. That reestablishment of the nation fulfilled an Old Testament prophetic message. It was part of a step that leads into God's greater kingdom purposes. Out of something bad in the moment can come good things. Isn't that our Romans chapter 8, verse 28? Scripture, it's not on our screens today, but that Scripture says that God causes all things to work for good to those who love Him and are called to His purposes. It does not say all things are good. Out of bad things, God brings about good things. Out of tragedy and heartbreak and suffering, God can change circumstances in people's minds and lives and directions, and good things happen. Our last point for today, point number three. Going out has rewards. Stephen served even up to the very moment of his death. 
Some might ask, well, what good did it do him because he still got killed? Well, let's look a little closer at the end of Acts chapter 7. I'll be reading from Acts 7, verses 55 and 56. Now listen carefully. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked intently towards the heavens and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, Stephen said, look, I've seen the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. This was in the very last moments of Stephen's life as he's being stoned to death. See, in that moment, did you see the priceless reward, the beautiful moment that Stephen experienced as he looked to heaven? Jesus saw, I mean, Stephen saw Jesus and the Father. Did you see it? Everywhere else in Scripture where Jesus is spoken of in terms of being at the throne of God since his ascension from earth, the places and times it speaks about him being at the throne of God, the phrase is either seated or sitting at the right hand of God. But what did Stephen see? Do you remember what it said? He saw Jesus standing. Stephen got to see Jesus standing to welcome him home, to welcome him into the heavenlies. You might say that Stephen got a standing ovation from the King of Kings from his throne. It's a way that we might say, well done, good and faithful servant Stephen. All of that was because of Stephen's faithfulness to serve. I kind of wonder what all that service looked like. Did you ever think about what Stephen's service might have looked like? We can only, you know, uh, guess, perhaps serving food to widows, certainly preaching boldly to religious leaders and other people that were lost in the nation, lost Jews who were looking for Messiah, friendliness to strangers, loving on children, loving actions to all. Stephen was even thinking of others right up until... The moment before his death, this is seen in Acts chapter 7, verse 60. And then he, Stephen, fell to his knees and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. <laughs> Man, how do you want to go out in life? Stephen, looking at, looking at the interest of other people. Some things are worth any price. Can I just ask, are you ready to get out of your box if you've been in a box? Are you ready to get out of some comfortability zones that you've been in, maybe for all or some of your faith life? Ready to go serve and get a little messy, be uncomfortable, suffer a little bit? What kind of legacy will you leave behind? Not to just your family, what kind of legacy will you leave for the kingdom of God? Will it be a lasting legacy, a legacy that people will remember? Or will you just leave a legacy that you were new in the box? What kind of reward can you expect for what you've sacrificed? A lot of questions there at the end from me, and I, I ask those questions for you to consider. You don't have to certainly provide an answer to me, but you might consider how would you answer that question in that day that you stand before the Lord? And and as we close and as I end my sermon today, I just invite you to consider that in a prayer time that's coming up here in just a moment. You're going to have a chance to think about new out of the box or messy and scuffed up working for the Lord. And if you haven't done that, maybe it's time to do that. Let me pray for you as you go to a prayer time and you seek out the Lord and you ask to hear the Lord's voice respond to what you ought to be doing. So Father God, I pray my friend for my friend now as they go to a prayer time. Just pray you talk to them, Lord. Light, lead them and guide them. Reveal something new or reveal something that you have for them, Father. And, and I just pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. Man, I'm glad that, uh, that you're going to have some time. I'll see you on the back side of the prayer time as we close out our day today.
Well, welcome back. I hope that the Lord spoke to you. I hope maybe you were able to talk about some things, maybe even talk a little uncomfortably about some things. You know, there's always opportunities to serve the Lord. Now, you're looking at this probably and watching this sermon probably because you're far away. You're not in San Marcos or this area. And if you're not, then some of your expression of service will be done in a local church. We want to encourage you to connect with a local group of people. Doesn't mean you can't watch sermons here, but it means that you'll have more of that personal connection and an influence and a way to serve in your community. If you are in the San Marcos area and need some help, please get in touch with us here at Solid Rock Church. You can do that in the email form uh, to info at srcrocks, R-O-C-K-S, dot com. We'll be happy to help you to give you some direction on ministries or opportunities to serve the Lord. We're glad that you were here today. We look forward to seeing you back when you can join us next time. God bless you, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.